Where the Crawdads Sing is a murder mystery, romance novel, and naturalist all in one big book. And it's just pretty cool overall. It tells the story of a marsh girl hidden in the swamp who has to fight through discrimination and loss, guilt, regrets, and eventually overcome her own fears and her own isolation. Where the Crawdad Sings starts with an introduction to our protagonist and her surroundings. She lives with her family in a strange swamp of, well, a marsh, and they just all live there in a very uncomfortable existence because their mom and dad are pretty uh, antagonistic towards each other, and her siblings are not the brightest people either. Her mother is the first one to leave her house to go somewhere else. Her dad and her brothers soon follow leaving her to be all alone trapped in the marsh. The book follows her from 1952 to 1969, and which during the time we see Kaya, our protagonist, grow up slowly, slowly experience sorts of discrimination, like when, when she was attempted to be, be brought into a normal uh, life, into our normal civilization, but she's rejected by everyone else there. One or two people decide to take her under her wing and teach her a few things about well, their lives, and eventually ends up with someone named Chase Andrews mysteriously dead and a court case seeing if Kaya is the one guilty. It's actually an amazingly great book. It's very thrilling. It's very twisty, turny. There's so many plot twists and overall keeps tension very, very well throughout the whole book. Okay, now on to the review. For emotional variation, WTCS or Where the Cards Sing is marvelous. It is so good. Kaya especially has very acute, very meaningful descriptions of her own feelings, not just by I think this, I feel that, also through poems, through poetry, through her own other ways of expression. She explains the ideas of isolation super well and compares herself to the natural wildlife in the marsh. Kaya does not just experience sadness, but also experiences a few happy moments as well. One of the best parts of emotional variation in this book, though, is her family, because they have changes of heart. Not only is her immediate family not just complete static characters that don't change, her brother and her dad are two good examples. Both of them have changes of heart throughout the book. And since the book takes place over such a long time span, ten, like more than 10 years, we get to see many, many viewpoints of the same development, and it's just amazing. Every character has feelings, even the ones that are usually considered professional, static, or just, you know, a side character. Like, for example, a lawyer appears in this book. Usually lawyers are just, oh, I argue for you in court. But the lawyer has feelings in this book, and he actually does things that are not just related to pure in court. So overall, I'd say that emotional variation, where the crossing is marvelous, her family the protagonist, and even the side characters get their own feelings. For ideas, topics, and themes in Where the Karat Sing, I would say the main one is the idea of the cycle of guilt, regret, and loss. Now, this is applied throughout the book in multiple areas, but the main way is obviously our own protagonist, Kaya. She's someone who has experienced tons of guilt, tons of loss, tons of regrets in her life because of the choices some of that she made and some that she blames herself for making, even though no reasonable person could have made the right decision either. Every good character in the book that is on Kaya's side, well, almost all of them, show the cycle of guilt and loss. Uh, a few examples are Tate, uh, her mother, who unfortunately is probably never coming back in the series, and one more person, but I'm not going to spoil it because it's too much information. But what I'm saying is that every good character, every character that is portrayed as on the good side has this cycle of guilt regret and loss especially kaya because after her entire family leaves her and then her attempted romances also go a little uh the wrong way she has to repeatedly experience the feelings of isolation and being alone and then blaming herself for these losses now besides that cycle there's also the idea of loyalty and honesty this is also applied throughout the book, but mainly in the romantic section, where the two people that are very in love with Kaya are both not the most honest or loyal people in some ways. And both of them go wrong in different directions, but still incorrect either way. And this is, again, influencing Kaya's own decision making and making her feel more guilty, more regretful, and honestly more lost because of their own decisions. 
The final mini theme in the book is abuse and neglect, because from the beginning, we see Kaya being, well, neglected by her entire family, basically, except for her mom, who mysteriously leaves. Her later um, boyfriends also are a little, a little neglectful in some ways and don't actually treat her emotions that well. And the entire town thinks of her as this weird little marsh girl. So they all don't treat her well either. These three th central themes, which is guilt, regret, loss, that's one theme, uh, abuse, neglect, and occasionally some other things like loyalty and honesty, are what form around the central themes of this book. Now, for written quality, the grammar, punctuation, sentence structures were excellent. The book felt relatively smooth. Most of them were pretty good. And I have to give credit for them trying a pretty cool style of being able to time shift consistently. And we keep jumping to more of a present day, but also repeatedly getting closer and closer every time we jump through a chapter to the past to the future. So that was pretty cool overall, but the time skips were sometimes very disorienting, especially if you realize the characters are both in the past and in the present. There are some very odd moments that just threw me off a little, but that's just because I'm not used to reading time skips a lot in books, and I genuinely think that this is a pretty good winning quality overall. Okay, now on to the flaws. For Where the Crawdads Sing, I feel like there are two flaws that kind of hurt my opinion of the book. The first one is that there is no humor in this book at all. There is not a single joke. Nothing is funny. You will never laugh reading this. Unless you laugh in like relief or you think this is just a, when Kaya feels good, you feel good. Okay, that takes some empathy. But besides that, there's literally no funny things in this book. It doesn't have much positive ideas. It's just kind of sad throughout. Even though there are a few happy moments, it's not funny. It's not humorous. Uh, the other problem, I think, is that there were too many apologies from a lot of characters. Some characters especially kept apologizing to Kaya again and again and again and again. Now, I understand that Kaya had suffered a lot through her life, right? A lot of regrets, a lot of guilt, a lot of loss. That's what I said earlier. But the issue is that if you apologize too many times, it just loses its impact and it just feels repetitive and boring after a while. In conclusion, Where the Kradat Sing is a marvelous book in almost every way. The written quality is great, the emotional variation is perfect, static characters are not static, side characters all have feelings, the ideas, topics, themes that covered are extremely consistent and applicable throughout the entire book, and are actually decently practical if you want to think about it in your own life. Overall, it's just a great book that doesn't have any humor, but besides that, it's just amazing.